Well, hello everyone. I wanted to make a, a response to a tag that's been going around uh, so far this year. And it's uh, a tag that I believe was started by Beetle Brad, where he showed the first compact disc that he bought back in the day. And then he asked us, what's the first CD you remember buying? And do you have it? And we share it with everybody. I thought that's a really good idea for a video. And uh, I've also seen another video by Fit to Be Tie Dyed. He went ahead and made a video um, and uh, in my case this is a perfect uh, timing situation because I had decided that for 2019 it's going to be uh, one of the main goals of mine to keep collecting CDs uh, I had been stopping CDs for the, for the most part except for new releases you know but I'm thinking of going back and building up my library and uh, I've always liked CDs and uh, this is going back to my memories of the first time I got into CD, which was 1986. The very first CD I bought, I bought in October of 1986. And I remember it well, and I still have it. It's in as good condition as the first day I bought it, even though I got a lot of mileage out of this and played it an awful lot in the past 32 plus years. And it's this CD. It's uh, Joan Jett and the Black Arts, Good Music. Now, you know, a lot of people don't like jewel cases. I love them personally. People th say, oh, the, the plastic case is cracked, they split, uh, they fall apart. Well, first of all, if they do, you can always replace them. That's the beauty of it. You can't replace a worn record album jacket, but you can replace the outer jewel case. But if you just take good care of it, you don't have to ever worry about that. And this is as pristine as the, as the day I got it. You know, and the CDs themselves, they say they scratch, they skip, they, you know. Well, you're not supposed to leave them laying around your table like poker chips or something like that. You just gently take it off the hub. I mean, is the playing surface back there. It's as perfect as the day that I got it. And you just replace it back on the hub when you're finished. Now, of course, you can't always do that when you get discs today. A lot of them come in those really crappy, in my opinion, cardboard sleeves like, you know, and you just shove them in there and the sleeves themselves get all dinged up and uh, the CDs kind of scratch more that way I think but you can't go wrong with a, a jewel case that's well cared for in my opinion now in October 86 I was so sold on compact discs right from the get go that I was trying to convert all of my friends who were vinyl heads and none of them wanted to know they all pretty much unanimously said oh I'm happy with vinyl uh, it's much bigger you know uh, I don't want to replace my whole record collection well it took a while. Uh, I, I, I knew this was going to take off, this format CD. And it took a while for most people to come around, maybe like three or four years. By the time we got from 86 to 1990, people were sold. And uh, vinyl kind of disappeared for the most part. Not altogether, I know. People always ma maintain that. You know, vinyl never really went anywhere, which is true. It, it never really did, but it kind of had a lull. There's no doubt about that. And back then, when CDs were so popular, if you would have told me that there's going to be a resurgence and vinyl would ever make a comeback, there's no way I would have put money on that and taken that bet. No way in hell I would have bet that. I would, I would, you know, I should have, I should have played the stock market with that because vinyl did come back. Um, but I took a 25-year break from from vinyl records after CDs came out. I was so sold on these things, I knew they'd be the wave of the future. That. I never wanted to go back, and it took 25 years until 2011. And 2011, ironically, the same month, October, same month I got my first CD. So it's 25 years almost to the day that I took a vacation from from vinyl. Um, you know, we know the story. Uh, those of you who have been around a while, I, in 2011, I got back into records big time. And um, I wound up starting my own channel in 2012. So even though... You know, I made a video earlier this year stating that I'm going to be bringing the CDs up to the fore. There's no way that vinyl is going to disappear completely, but I think you'll see much more selective choices that I make in the future. But back to CDs. You know, now I can I appreciate I appreciate what an artist does with vinyl. You know, the idea that they make the album with an artistic intention, especially before the digital age, where they put side one, the sequencing they want, and then you flip the album over, and they have a song that fits well to end side one, then they have a, a song that kicks off side two, you know, a, a special choice, and everything is very calculated. 
So I do appreciate an album. I also appreciate the idea of playing a music album from start to finish as intended because it kind of tells a story in a way in some cases and it's not only necessarily a collection of songs, it's an artistic statement. I get all that. However, um, going back to the day when I first got CDs, at the time it was really cool that you had everything on one one single disc and it held a lot more songs than a, a vinyl record did you know so that was cool and the sound was great it didn't the records didn't skip there was no surface noise there was no hisses uh snap crackle pop all that was very attractive in the beginning and to, a good reason to stay away from records this disc still sounds as good today as it did 32 years ago or more so if you just take care of them you know, it's going to sound better and have a longer life than records do, I think. Although records, too, it's a lot of it's a matter of, of handling and care. But records will wear out. You know, over time, if you play them a lot, they will eventually have the grooves worn out, which these don't. Um, so my first player that I got, the CD player, was a Magnavox. And what I liked about it was, you know, even though I said a little while ago that an album is meant to be listened all the way through. You had the option with CDs, if you were so inclined, to program which tracks you wanted to hear. This particular CD has 10 tracks on it. Now, if I only like, say, five of the tracks, um, I could program the players to skip the five that I don't like. And not only that, but you could put them in order of which songs you want to hear. And as I say, you know, I, I respect the artistic integrity. You know, I believe that, you know... Uh, an artist puts, makes a, a record the way they want it. However, it was fun to say, okay, well, I want to listen to track 10 first, then 7, then 1, then 4, then 2. You could put them in any order you wanted, or you could hit shuffle and just get some random play. There was a lot of options with these, and I knew there was no way they weren't going to succeed. But uh, one drawback was back in the day, these particular CDs, because they weren't a household item yet, you couldn't really find them in regular stores like uh, Sam Goody, The Wiz, Tower Records, Record World. What still was happening for the first, say, four years, the end of the 1980s or so into the 90s, you would have to get the big vinyl record first. And where my head was at the time was I didn't want to buy this clunky record. Like I remember with this album, the Good Music album by Joan Jett. If you wanted to hear it, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have downloading. We didn't have whatever, Spotify or whatever it is today. So you had to go out and physically buy the vinyl record. And it was only 7 or $8, I guess, around that time, if I remember correctly. But you'd buy the record, and you get the record home. And because uh, the record came out first, you put it on your turntable, and you'd listen to the music. And I, I remember doing this all the way up till 1989 for McCartney. It's Flowers in the Dirt album. I have to buy the vinyl first. This big clumsy thing. You flip it over the, the dust, wipe the dust off. <laughs> I put it on, and uh, the music. You know, you'd enjoy what you'd enjoy the songs. But then I was like, I can't wait for the compact disc to come out so we can get it really clean. You know, you know. I've since come to appreciate again the warm sound of vinyl records, but for a time, this really crystal clear sound quality was the only way to go for me. And I remember how elated I was when I bought this disc and put it on. I could hear it, everything so clear. The instrument's more pronounced. It didn't seem so buried. It just seemed much more clarity on these things than the record. I was happy to toss the record aside once I got the CD. And that, and that was going on for a while, to the point where um, they had to have specialty stores because they didn't. none of the main chains, the department stores and things, were, were carrying CDs. You had, you had. I remember a little tiny place called uh, the CD Experience. It was located about an hour's drive from where I lived at the time, and I used to have to drive there. And they would uh, have a chart with magic markers, and they'd write down upcoming new CD releases. It was a, there was only a small selection, and they were expensive, maybe twenty dollars for a CD or something like that. Then you know, and if you wanted certain discs by certain artists. A lot of them were imported. They weren't in the USA yet, if you lived in the USA. You had to get them from other countries as imports. I did that with some of the solo Beatle albums. Uh, I was just uh, very thrilled to be able to get them. It didn't matter what, you know, what country they came from, just to have them on a shiny 5-inch disc that really sounded great. Who cared, you know? But that's the way it was, you know, um, until the regular stores like Record World and Sam Goody and everything followed suit. And it became the opposite way. Before long, you had 
you know, CDs were, were the ones that were in the front of the store, and they relegated a little tiny record section to the back. And I remember one of my friends who was resisting compact disc at the time saying, you know, I'm really pissed off, he said. They're forcing us to make choices that we don't want to make. You know, after, and I remember uh, my boss at the time where I worked, you know, he was the same way, you know, he was, uh, he, he never thought it would happen, never take over, and for a while it did. I'll close by saying, you know, it's really hard to believe, for me anyway, that this format is really going to start disappearing. Uh, it's not popular anymore, and uh, the CDs are really kind of just vanishing, of people are saying, you know, um... I don't see that as much uh, as people say. They're, they're certainly not being stocked in stores, but if you go to online, you can get a CD you want. They're not vanishing from online, but just as vinyl made a comeback, I truly believe that the CD is going to make a comeback one day. I don't think we've heard the last of compact discs. Uh, it may be in a lull right now, but just as vinyl was dead in 1991 or two and came back, so too do I believe the CD is going to come back, because I still think that as much as I enjoy vinyl for various reasons, many reasons, I think the CD has always been, in my opinion, the uh, finest way, really, to listen to music. The most, most convenient way, too. What are your thoughts on what are the first CDs that you remember buying? Let me know.